Hey everyone, Micah here with Electrek. Today I'm coming to you from Micromobility America here in San Francisco, where we're checking out a ton of micromobility companies here at the show. Come along with us while we see what's here at the show. The micromobility space has seen skyrocketing growth, which you probably already know about if you've been following any of this media who covers how these important vehicles are helping replace cars in our cities. The two-day event here in San Francisco was full of interesting new product launches, speakers and panels covering important issues in the world of micromobility, presentations from politicians, both in person and via the magic of pre-recorded teleprompted addresses, and test rides. Boy, were there test rides. There were so many cool things to see that I'm gonna have to run through each of these products and companies quickly. You should definitely pause the video and dive a little deeper into each of the companies that strike your fancy though, as there's no way I can do justice to two days worth of awesome products in just one little YouTube video. I'll also hit them in alphabetical order here so I don't have to play favorites. You're all my children. First up, we've got Apollo Scooters, a Canadian electric scooter company that makes some awesome e-scooters by designing them from the ground up instead of just putting together a pile of a la carte parts from a Chinese factory's catalog. I took a spin on their Apollo City Pro, which shows off the company's variable regenerative braking, but I was blown away by seeing the new Apollo Pro in person for the first time. This hyperscooter gets well over 40 miles an hour or 70 kilometers per hour and combines cool features like wireless phone charging and 360 degree surround lighting. Next is Artful Design Group's Airglide Scooter, which is a front-loading cargo electric scooter. It's got a saddle so you can ride it comfortably seated, it's got enough cargo space for a pile of groceries, and you can even disassemble it to collapse into its own cargo bucket if you want to use the scooter like a shopping cart when you get to the grocery store. It's still a prototype though, so don't expect to see it in your local Best Buy just yet. A bit of a larger scooter on display was from Aventura X, which begs the question, why doesn't the English language have different words for these two very different types of vehicles? Anyways, as more of a seated scooter, the Aventura X has this awesome old-school Vespa vibe that had me channeling my inner Audrey Hepburn. The Barcelona-based company is bringing its European electric scooter vibes to the US now with this awesome ride. Bimodal showed off this novel e-bike drive system that connects a gear ring to your disc brake rotor and uses a small detachable motor to directly drive your rear wheel. Wild! Boaz Bikes is a bit of a misnomer since these are more like scooters, but their low seated position, cargo space, suspension, disc brakes, mirrors, and other safety features help the company push safety as a major theme, focusing on a stable and comfortable ride that can help users feel more in control. Sticking with the scooter theme here, Bo is an upcoming UK-based electric scooter company with a sleek looking design that offers a smooth and high quality ride that is a major upgrade over cheap Chinese Xiaomi style scooters. It's no Tesla, but it's close for a scooter. Cake's designs go in a bit of a different direction, less sleek and more Swedish industrial. But it works for them, and plenty of people were lining up for the chance to test out Cake's different styles of electric motorcycles and mopeds. Eli's microelectric car was technically one of the biggest things at the Micromobility America show, but it's still pretty micro compared to real cars. I tested this thing out and was surprised by how much like a conventional car it felt, yet how small and convenient it was to operate. It also felt much larger inside than it really was thanks to those glass doors that don't give you a claustrophobic feeling like you're in a wheeled coffin, but rather that you're in some kind of futuristic pod-like thing. A bit hard to describe, but an awesome experience nonetheless. If the Eli was one of the biggest things at the show, then the Ascend electric rollerblades were probably the smallest. These things can strap right onto your shoes and give you electric skateboard style mobility in a smaller and lighter package. The tentative look on many first time riders faces made me think that these take some getting used to, but the pro rider there definitely showed that you can go wild with these things once you get used to them. Back up on the macro end of the micro mobility spectrum is Faction with its driverless Archimoto three wheeled electric vehicle. It's trippy to see both seats replaced by a cargo pod for driverless delivery rolls. I'm more used to the conventional Archimoto FUV, 
and I even had the chance to steal one for a couple days as my transportation around San Francisco. These 80 mile per hour electric trikes are a blast and will have random strangers coming up to you at red lights to ask you what the hell that thing is. It's called an Archimodo. Huh? It's called Archimodo. Archimodo? Yeah. Okay, a bit of a whiplash here as we go super small again. This time adding one more wheel while cutting the weight compared to the Archimodo by almost the total weight of an Archimodo. Hunter boards are South American electric skateboards with a super sophisticated suspension system. They look awesome and even have this cool removable battery. A really slick design if you ask me. Another slick design is the Jackrabbit Micro e-bike. This is really more of a seated scooter, but it combines the bigger wheels and riding position of an e-bike with the lightweight and simple design of a scooter. I'll never not smile when I see these things, and having tested one myself, I know they ride as fun as they look. Another micro car style vehicle on display was the Nimbus One, which has a leaning design and removable batteries to give a combination of car and scooter-like convenience. Stay dry in the rain, but still slip through traffic? What's not to like? Pidey's batteries were at the event, showing off the fact that they make the batteries used by many of the biggest e-bike companies in the business. There's a decent chance the battery in your e-bike or scooter was made by them, and you don't even know it. They were super cool folks, and even gave me this beautiful Beijing magnet. I'm not saying they bribed their way into this video, but Joyride definitely did bribe their way in with some awesome bike and scooter socks. Their company has software that lets startups white label the Joyride app and make their own shared micro mobility company, basically making it simple to start your own Lime or Bird competitor. It's probably cool and all, but I just really wanted a pair of these awesome socks. I don't know if these are pronounced Sarit or Sarit, but the three wheeled little e trikes are quite striking, whatever they're called. It's another cool solution to deal with the rain or cold weather problem while still reducing the size of the vehicle and the materials needed to produce them. Why do we need giant cars in cities when smaller vehicles like these can carry one or two riders just fine? If you want a more open air experience though, Unagi's sexy looking scooters will give it to you. Though the company is pivoting hard towards subscriptions over ownership, so consider that you might want to look into renting instead of buying. Speaking of renting, Vio's new Apollo electric bike lets scooter and bike sharing riders double down the fun by carrying a passenger on the back. Instead of a big moped for two riders or a dangerous two people, one kick scooter scenario, Veo's Apollo finds a Goldilocks solution with a bike-sized two-person transporter. Now Electrek doesn't give out many awards, but if we did, and if we had one for coolest taillights on an e-bike, it would definitely go to WOW Bikes for these LED strips embedded in their seat stays, which also serve as brake lights and turn signals. Usually I think turn signals on e-bikes are gimmicky since they're usually too small and close together to serve the purpose, but somehow I think these might give drivers the general idea of what's going on. And there's no way anyone's going to say they didn't see you at night with these big taillights. Wheel is the last alphabetically, but certainly not the least. That's thanks to their high-tech e-bike prototype that is basically the Tesla autopilot of the e-bike world. That chunky head tube hides a motor that controls the steering. The goal is to make a safer bike that doesn't crash if you take your hands off the bars, and uses computer vision to keep you in the bike lane, etc. The technology is pretty crazy, and they're trying to distance themselves from the original viral clips of their bike going completely riderless, since that's not really the point here. But it's pretty darn striking, so of course I'm going to show it to you. But in actuality, it's not about necessarily going driverless, but rather using existing technology to make riding safer for new or hesitant riders in general. Phew, that was a pile of companies and there's even more I didn't get a chance to include. The show was huge and you will want to make sure that you tune in again next year or this coming summer for Micromobility Europe. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that visit here at Micromobility America. If you did, why don't you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time.